Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. My name is Corey Heights, and on today's episode, we are going to be talking about transferring. All right. right now, it is May of 2021. The NCAA transfer portal is just at record numbers, and kids around the world and in the U.S. are transferring AAU teams, high school teams, prep school teams, and I thought it'd be good to share my own transfer experience and just know that every situation is different with families and with kids, and maybe sharing light on mine um, might just give you a better insight on why it does not bother me as much. So to give you some background, I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, and I attended the Sayre School from 5th grade to 8th grade. And this was a small private school in downtown Lexington. Uh, I think our class size was 35 kids, and it was very supportive, very good education, good basketball team. We all had fun. But playing there in high school, I did not think it was going to be the best chance for me to reach my goal, which has always been D1. So we would looked at transferring to a public high school called Henry Clay High School, which had a storied basketball tradition and was one of the biggest high schools in the state of Kentucky. Plus, we had good experience in-house, too, because my mom actually had taught there in the past. So we know all about it. Uh, their coach was a Hall of Fame coach in the state, Coach Al Pruitt. They'd won multiple state titles and sent many kids D1. So we actually lived on a farm in Kentucky outside of Lexington, and the side of the street we were on was not in Henry Clay's district. And the other side of the road actually was. So to go to Henry Clay, I had to take a class there that was not offered at the high school whose district I was in. So I ended up enrolling in Russian class with seven other kids and ended up being the Russian club president uh, during my time in the club. But I had to take that class to be able to go to Henry Clay. And fast forward, my first day of school, um, it's, it's a class that's gigantic, maybe a class of 500 kids uh, for freshmen. Didn't know anyone except just a couple kids, and basketball was just brutal. Went to open gym, uh, went to tryouts. Uh, at the time, I was 6'3", 150 pounds, and I got led on the team because they knew my family was tall and I was going to be a kid that needed development. But it was rough. Um, ate lunch alone, you know, was struggling academically. And basketball was tough every day, too. Uh, I played in the freshman team, played in the JV team, and then every day we would practice against the varsity. And every day, us freshmen would guard the varsity team. Well, the guys I'm guarding are D1 guys. You know, Matt McAfee was 6'10", 270 pounds. He ended up playing at Samford. And Mark, uh, I can't remember Mark's uh, last name at this point, but he was 6'8", big-bodied kid who went to Moorhead State. So every day I'm getting my brains beat in there. And uh, playing-wise, freshman I'm playing because there's about seven of us on the team. So I got a lot of playing there, but didn't play at all JV that entire year. Also during this year, being 14 years old, going through puberty, um, and just struggling, I also developed a condition called alopecia areata. And if you don't know what alopecia areata is, it's when parts of your hair starts falling out of your head. So I had bald patches within my head that I would grow my hair longer than and try to hairspray to cover it, but couldn't do it very well. So it was tough. You know, I actually got bullied in my my basketball locker room by by other kids making fun of me, and I really couldn't do anything about it. I wouldn't didn't have the gift of gab. Um, I was skinny, so it's not like I'd punch him in the nose and you know like you would say to do with a normal bully, uh, I just had to take it. And that really, really depressed me. So it was a tough season, tough academic year, but you know what? We got sophomore year to look forward to. Had a good summer AAU, was on a good team with good teammates, good coach. Actually, an NBA guy was on that team um, and uh, just did much better. But once again, when I showed up sophomore year to this high school, I just – it wasn't working. Now on JV, I think the first semester I played maybe a few minutes, maybe scored a bucket, maybe a point. And still, we're just getting our brains beat in every day, going up against the varsity and me guarding bigger guys that just I, I couldn't guard. I just wasn't physically big enough yet, which is fine. But that tacked on with you know lack of social structure, um, academics being tough as well. I just I went into depression, and I really thought about wondering if I should continue living at one point, but that passed pretty quickly as I, I wanted to see how this all was going to pan out, right? So 
since it wasn't working, since I didn't see much of a future there, um, I think my family and I, I don't know if they, they saw me depressed or if I brought it up, but we started talking about options for transferring. And one option was one, to go to the high school whose district I was in, Tate's Creek. Two was to move in with my grandmother in Northeast Indiana and go to my high school, uh, go to the high school my Uncle Tom went to. Uh, Uncle Tom was running up to Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana and played at the University of Kentucky. So that was an option there. And then the third option was actually to transfer to a school within Lexington that was Catholic. And this school was called Lexington Catholic, and they were actually the number one team in the state at the time. Previous year, they lost a state title on one point, and um, now they were trying to re-avenge uh, that loss, and they were stacked, you know. And we went and talked to him and visited, and Coach Danny Haney saw the value of having a kid like myself who had tall relatives, and they could develop me and try to get me uh, to reach my goal of playing D1. So we made the decision to do it. I transferred in January, and um, our first game was coming up in a couple of days, and it was at Rupp Arena. So my first game, I'm going from not playing JV to my first game being sitting on the varsity bench, uh, at Rupp Arena for the Class A tournament. Now, the Class A tournament in Kentucky happens every year midseason, and that's where all the small schools get together and compete to be, you know, find out who the best small school in the state is because not, not every time these small schools get to make it to the big tournament. And we played in that as well as some other big-time teams like University Heights, Harlan, um, both teams that were nationally ranked throughout our time in Kentucky. And, you know, we were going to go up against Alvin Sims in the first round. Now, Alvin Sims was averaging 40 points a game. He would end up playing at Louisville and then play in the NBA for a few years. And my first day of practice at Lexington Catholic, Coach Haney said, Corey, you're going to be Alvin Sims today in practice. So every time you get the ball, shoot it. Now, this is me going into the number one team in the state's practice. And every time you get the ball, I'm getting manhandled. I'm getting fouled. I'm getting pushed around. And I was just shooting. And after about 30 minutes of that, working on our defense, we went and did big man drills. So for 15 minutes, I'm doing big man drills with Vondale Morton, who at that time was one of the top 10 sophomores in the state, or I'm sorry, in the country, and some other big men. And our big man coach was Chip Rupp. Now, Chip Rupp played on a state championship team at Henry Clay, also played at West Virginia in Vanderbilt, and his grandfather was Adolph Rupp. So every day I've got 15 minutes at least of big man instruction with other good players. And fast forward a couple days, we're at Rupp Arena after eating our pregame meal at Rick Patino's restaurant. Uh, we're staying in hotels. We're getting out of school. Uh, we did not win Class A that year, but what a, what a way to start. And then fast forward a few games, I'm, I'm dressing varsity, and then I'm getting my first varsity minutes and points, and also starting JV that year as well. So um, walked into a great... Great situation. I knew a lot of kids there from, from going to Catholic uh, Sunday school. Um, the academics were good, supportive. It was smaller class sizes. And um, it, just, it just clicked. It was a better fit. And then, you know, we had Coach Haney, um, who was advocating for me. You know, we had lots of college coaches calling. And he said, hey, Corey is here. He's going to be tall like the rest of his family. He's not going to do much for me now. But by the time he matures and develops for college, he's going to be a steal for a program. So I had him constantly talking to coaches. And we played in nationwide events. We traveled internationally. And it all ended up culminating with me going to prep school and then playing in a D1 program. So would that have happened without going to Lexington Catholic? I don't know. I'm assuming it would not have because this was a better fit for me. So with that being said, I just want to say if kids transfer high schools, I know sometimes they get a lot of flack, but it might be an upgrade for them, right? It might be a better fit. Now, I know Amari Stoudemire and Durant, I think those guys went to six or five high schools. I don't exactly know what's going on in those situations. But for me, this transfer was a pure upgrade that, that helped me reach my goals. So when I see a kid out there transferring, yeah, sometimes you might question why they're doing it. Are they looking for a you know, bigger piece of the pot or, or who knows what? But for me personally, I just wanted to share that I get it when I see it. And I know every situation is unique. And I just wanted to tell you guys my experience to know that if you guys have any questions about transferring, let me know. I can only give you my experience on it, but to me it worked out. And by the way, when I transferred to Lexington Catholic, my hair started growing back and I did not have alopecia areata anymore. So uh, that was a blessing as well. So anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. If you watch this on YouTube, that is great. But you can also subscribe and listen to me anywhere and anytime on all the major platforms. So thanks again. This is Corey Heights with the Prep Athletics Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. 